11 on data structures. And I'd like to introduce Nicola Stuckey, who will be talking about RBB vector, a practical general purpose immutable sequence. OK, thank you. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. OK. Then, let's get started. Our motivation behind this uh, data structure was to improve the current implementation of the immutable vector that we have in Scala. It also exists in Clojure. And well, this data structure has uh, a, lo a logarithmic access time, update time, append on either end, and splits. Um, but it has a bad concatenation and uh, some other uh, structural modification, like inserting or removing elements from within the, the, um, the vector. And well, in practice, we use um, an M of 32, which makes the, the logarithm bounded by actually seven, if we use um, 32 bit integers as indices. So we have an effectively constant time on our bounds. And the idea is to improve it by, to logarithm bounds all around. So RRB stands for a relaxed radix balance vector. And I'll be explaining what that means. So first, this is the, the current state of the vector. We have a radix balance tree uh, without the relaxed, uh, which uh, is the core to implement uh, efficient access, updates, splits, and appends. And then we have a, another layer of abstraction where we do some amortization on top of the, of the logarithmic times. And um, RRB adds uh, an additional layer here for uh, what's called RRB tree, which adds the possibility of implementing uh, an efficient concatenation and with concatenation and splits, we can actually implement uh, insertion, deletions, and so on. This was presented um, in a report uh, in 2012. But in this paper, we actually focus more on how to, uh, to take back the amortization optimization from the, from the original vector and make it really practical for the users. So let's focus on how the, the base tree structure is. So we basically have, um, for a tree that will contain n elements, we have a constant branching factor of m, in our case 32. Uh, we want to make it as large as possible, um, where every element is located in the leaves, and uh, all elements are in the same depth. And uh, we'll leave, it might be possibly empty on the right-hand side if we don't have all the n elements to fill it. We also use uh, immutable arrays to have a performance on access times and, uh, and spatial wise. And we have this uh, logarithmic bound on the tree because of the structure. So the core operations that we can implement on this structure are first, access. We basically, to traverse this tree, we only need to know two things. The index where we want to go and the current depth of the node. And then with just uh, a few low level operations which require some bit shifting and masking, we can get uh, all the sub indices of each node in the way. So it's logarithmic time because we have to go through all the, the from the root to the leaf. For updates, it's quite similar. We go through the leaf and then we have to update the leaf but because our arrays are immutable, we need to, to update its parent and so on until we go to the root. Here I left explicitly this M to show, even though if it's a constant, to show what the effect of changing that M would be on the, on the performance of the program, of, of the data structure. Splitting is also quite similar. You go down to the leaf, you find the index where you want to cut, and you ignore everything beyond that, and do it on the right or on the left. Um, and then you have to bubble up all the updates up to the root. Then appending is also going down to the leaf um, and uh, adding it to the leaf if possible. And then again, bubbling up the updates up to the root. And if we don't have space in the leaf, we need to create a new branch, which is also uh, a logarithmic time because the depth is again logarithmic. Um, but what about concatenation or indeed insertion or deletions? Well, the only way to implement them on this structure is in linear time. So this doesn't suit us, especially 
In our case, we had a limitation for parallel um, vectors, which were not getting parallelized when we, because of this limitation. Um, so now we go, move on on how to, to add another layer of abstraction on top of this tree. So we will add some different nodes to the tree that are our relaxed nodes, and the ones that I explained before will be called our balanced node. So the relaxed nodes are relaxing the branching factor constraint. So we can have less than m if we want. And um, with this, we need to add a height invariant because our height is not uh, any more bounded as before by some direct formula. And we will uh, also add some information about the, the elements that are inside of that tree, uh, specifically the index ranges that are in the tree. And we only need to add them to the, to the unbalanced nodes. The, the balanced nodes still work perfectly fine without it. So, um, and the last thing is that you can only have um, ba a balance node under another balance node. So if you reach a uh, an unbalanced node, so if you reach a balance node, from there on it will always be balanced and more performant. Um, so the core operations, well, you we have the concatenation as, the, as suggested. For this, the, I, I won't go into all the details, but uh, I will go to a high-level idea. We basically will merge uh, all those yellow um, nodes that are in the center of the between the two um, in the center of the of the vector. And each time we merge, uh, we will start bottom bottom up. So we merge this le level, then we merge the second level, and we will have to do some uh, rebalancing of the nodes that I marked in black. Uh, this rebalancing consists in shifting elements left. Um, and we go up until we reach the root or a new root if we need to, if the tree grows in size. And we will leave on all, every node that I left in gray untouched. And well, the, because we're only touching those center nodes, we are bounding by this m square log m. So we are, and m was a constant, so we're still in a constant. And well, what happens now with the access when we when when we are when we have an unbalanced node? We are, we we now need to access the the data bar on on the index ranges, which we can do in logarithmic time, which is quite small considering that uh, it's um, uh, we have a, a log two of two, so uh, seven at most, um, and it's one memory access. Uh, one additional memory access, unfortunately. And the rest, as soon as we reach a uh, balance mode, we use the normal, well, the previous version, which doesn't need that additional access to memory. Um, for updates, it's quite similar, but uh, we need to carry around this size information. We don't need to modify it. That's a good thing about the update. Um, okay. Um, the um, splitting is also quite similar, but in this case we need to, uh, to modify the, the, the information in the, um, inside of the index ranges. So if we split on the remove elements on the right, we need to split at some point and just modify the last one. And if we split on the left, we actually need to change all the ranges in this, in this additional structure. Mm. Appending is also quite similar because we just need to uh, update the last index range if we have an unbalanced node. Um, and if we grow, we just have to add a one at the end for a one L, uh, element. So with this, we achieved logarithmic bounds all around. But this is not all because we want uh, to keep all the performances that we have due to optimizations from the old vector. So here we're, we're focusing on amortization based on uh, index locality of the operation. So the first thing that I'll show you is how the, the vector object is actually structured. So basically, the, ba well, the basic structure only has a, a reference to the, the root, and then um, some metadata like size to compute things faster, or height 
that we required for for the um, traversal dump. Uh, and now I will introduce the, um, a concept that we call focus, which is basically a f we, we, we cho choose a focus branch for any um, vector and we'll add some, some nodes that I marked in yellow to uh, in, inside of the, 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 the vector object. So we have direct access to those nodes. And well, these additional uh, fields that are not so large because if we have 32 bit indices, we will have uh, at most seven, or if we have 64 indices, we will have at most 13 additional references, which is strictly lower than the, the M's that we're using. Um, so strictly lower than the, the size of the nodes. Okay, some stuff that we can already do with this, uh, because this is the first part of a two, step, two steps. So first we can jump directly to the lowest possible node when we want to access something. Um, we only require an XOR operation to know where to jump to, so it's quite efficient. And then we don't have to fetch the memory of all the nodes that are on top, so less in directions. Then, well, if we are in a, an imperative uh, context, we can also do some additional amortization with over some imperative iterator where we can amortize the access time to constant time. But we require a, a mutable focus branch, which is not the case in the normal vector. And we can also create a, 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 an imperative builder that has an append operation to the data structure that also amortizes to constant time. But for this, we also require the, to mutate the branch, and we additionally need uh, mutable arrays. Uh, so the second part of the of the optimization is decoupling. So what we do is, now that we have these additional edges, we, are, we actually can see that we have those yellow edges are, are redundant, so we can get rid of them. If we get rid of them, then if we update something underneath, well, inside of those trees that are in the focus, we actually don't need to bubble up the updates to the, to the root. So if we update something here, we just need to update it while we create, we just need to recreate this object, not all the way up. Mm. So with this, we, we can achieve local updates, uh, well, amortize constant time lo local updates, consecutive appends on, each, on either end, or uh, consecutive small splits, like uh, asking for the tail of the, of the sequence, or in fact, uh, any combination of those operations as long as they are in the same index ranges. Uh, but this, uh, this has a, a little issue when we are in the RRB context because while we were relaxing, we added the, um, the index ranges. But now they are not getting updated when we when we do this optimization. So because they don't bubble up the updates, so the the solution is quite simple. We simply when we actually require that information, we lazily compute the normalized version of that branch, which will take us a logarithmic time because we update all the, those nodes up to the road. And then, from there on, we use the normalized version instead of the non-normalized. Non so uh, now so about the actual performance of the vector. So the, the, the first case is the, the, when the vector it has actually no unbalanced nodes, which in fact is, uh, ended up being the most common case in our, using our um, collections library. Um, then I, I compared it with the worst case scenario where I tried to put at, uh, as most unbalanced nodes as possible. And we also compared it with the RB vector, which is the old version. We also compared it with some uh, additional, uh, well, other data structure like copy and write array, which has the best access time. Uh, finger tree, which have good appends and uh, access to the, to the, um, to the, um, to the ends, and the red black tree because it's um, a well-balanced structure that we all know quite well. Um, so this is the, the speed of concatenation, uh, where the, the lower is better, and, and the axes represent the, the sizes of both uh, sides of the concatenation. So we can see on the top that we have a quite steep slope for our old implementation RB vector. 
Then we have a copy and write array, which is better, but still has a slope. And then we have finger trees and our B vector are kind of on the same level. It's almost constant. And well, basically we match uh, finger tree concatenation in some cases. In some cases it wins by a little bit. Uh, now, updating elements inside. Yeah, here I had to put it in logarithmic scales because it, if not, it didn't show, and lower is better. So, here we can see uh, in blue our implementation or our big vector when it's uh, unbalanced. And here in uh, purple we can see the um, RB and RB vector when they are balanced. We can see that there is some steps which correspond to the growth in size of the, um, of the depth of the vector. And this is when we access randomly elements. When we actually go and access them in sequence, we can see that uh, it goes down to constant time as as we have a, well, we're taking advantage of the um, fast access through the um, uh, through the um, focus and decoupling. Um, accessing is also quite similar to uh, to array access when we are in slow in random uh, when we, we have a small array, and then it starts growing uh, when we get larger, and it's starts uh, growing a bit faster when, when we actually cannot fit stuff in cache. So here we have good caches, and here we can see the difference between uh, having um, to access the, in the, um, the unbalanced nodes versus no unbalanced nodes. And here we have a small artifact of the JIT compiler that actually gives us some performance improvement when you grow the vector. Um, and when we go to, to accessing them in sequence, we have a, also a quite uh, constant -ish, uh, access time for um, balanced ones, and we grow by a constant f factor when we have unbalanced ones, but this is still a, a plateau. Uh, and uh, an implementation detail that I have mentioned is that uh, we actually don't, will not have unbalanced nodes when the size is lower than 1,024 elements. Um, so now for the builder uh, that I mentioned before with the imperative construct, we actually almost match the, the, the speed of building um, an array, a new array and filling it. Uh, where overhead gets all amortized over all the updates. And if we would use the, the classical version where we don't know the, the size of the, 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 the target array and we have to uh, create a new one, lar a larger new one, and copy every element. We actually do faster without any optimization on the on our vector. So this would be the array with a uh, with need to copy, and here are vectors and arrays with a pre pre known size. Now, well, and this is all I have to say for vectors. So what would be the cases where, I mean, obviously there's a lot of cases where you'd want to use this, but what would be the pathological cases where you might want to avoid the state structure, either due to asymptotic or just constant overheads? Uh, what? Uh, the, can, can you repeat? <laughs> when would you not want to use a state structure? Um, when, we, when you really want uh, performance on some really specific case, because this data structure is giving a, a lot of um, trade-offs to give a good performance all across. Maybe the, the, the answer is the other way around. When you actually don't know what, what operations you're going to use, that's the best use case of this data structure because you can give it to anyone and they won't fall into some linear time operation, whatever they do. It seems that with uh, decoupling, you have uh, you will have old branches that are reachable from the root, but no longer live, uh, and so the garbage collector might not be able to reclaim those. Uh, are you worried about that? Does that 
Is that an issue in practice? You mean, oh, from the root? No, because the root is always contained in a, in a, a vector object, so we have all those references that we are actually care about. Uh, or does the uh, you have too many references, right? I mean, the point of decoupling was that you, yes, you um, update the display, but you don't update the root. So the root still has a copy oh, of a stale yes. branch. We actually, we actually don't keep that reference to the lower branch. We remove it. OK. So the, and if you had that, you actually would have a hole or a, mm, well, a null pointer in, inside of that, that space where the branch should be. So we don't keep that reference and don't leak memory. Ah, OK. But Thanks. when we create it, we have to replace that specific part of memory to make sure that there is no leak. Okay. Thanks. Yeah.